Well, today we're going to work on a vintage kitchen clock. Now I don't know the history of this clock, but it is a beautiful clock. I don't know, I don't think it's been refinished, it could have been. It used to have a, looks like a sticker on the back here that told about the clock, kitchen clock. But this is a real fancy one. It does have the peacock in, in the decal that's on the inside of this clock. See, there's a peacock tail on its head, and it's got the little birds, barn swallows or something. It's usually really decorative. And on here you can tell that the face is really worn. We're not messing with any of that stuff. This here, I would say someone's worked on this clock before as in cleaning it up. It does have a black paper uh, cardboard like uh, backing on the inside here. But just the same. But we're, we're planning on doing is taking this clock and we're going to take it apart, oil it. After we get it clean, we're going to oil it and put it back together again. So, let's get at her. So the first thing we have in here, there's a little pin in here that holds this washer down that holds the hands into place. So let's carefully take this pin out in which a pin isn't straight You'll notice this pin is pointy at this end and fatter at this end. It wedges itself in there is what it does. That's a washer with a square hole in it that holds the hands in or ha hands on there's a minute hand with a square hole in it And there's the hour hand. And right here is the part that operates the bonger. So to take the face off, I see it's got a flat head screw and a Phillips screw. So you can tell this clock has been uh, rebuilt or whatever before. So let's get those out and carry on from there. Okay, we got the face off. This here is supposed to be able to pop straight through, but it's hanging up right here on that part. You can see where it comes in to make the alarm work. in which that triggered this here, let it go. When it's setting up in the upward position, that alarm cannot go bong, bong, bong. And then when it drops down into the 
groove, that's when this thing takes off. Of course, this has to be wound separate. So anyway, let's get these works out. There are one, two, there should be four screws in here. And they're all the flathead screws. So let me get them out and I'll be right back. Okay, now I have the four screws out. There's one, two, three, four. You need to take this wire off. It comes down to alarm. And I've already straightened out the wire. So all I have to do is pull it out. And it's free. And there we go. This here counts how what time it is, the hour. And there'll be less teeth as it goes around. So, so let's get this in the cleaner. But before we do, I want to loosen these springs a little bit more and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, I have this tool here that has different size holes depending on which size you have for what the key is. This littler one also fits on there, but we'll go ahead and use it. But anyway, down inside, which I can't really show you, there's a little stop that will catch the gear so it won't unwind. And what I have to do is take two hands to really hold on to this thing. Get this over here. To really hold on to this thing so it doesn't take off on me. I check which way it's going to wind. I reach in here and pull that back and just let it slowly unwind. Okay, I got it wound down as far as I can. There's a peg there and a peg there to keep this spring from getting too big. So I'm going to guess it's still an eight day clock, but I can't unwind it anymore. So let's get it in the cleaner. Brought it outside, so I put it in the cleaner. See how dirty that thing looks? Let's see if it'll shine up too. There we go. Close that thing up before all the birds start falling out of the sky. I'll take it back in so it'll be in where it's warm. And in a couple hours or so, we'll take a look at it again. Now I did want to show you that evidently in 1958, uh, this jeweler in uh, Montana worked on this clock. So he's the one that might have redone everything to make it look nice. Normally, when I rebuild these clocks, I usually find them and they look like they just came out of a barn. They're uh, all the finishes pretty much gone on it. I mean, it looked like a clock that you just take and throw in the burn pile. And I'd clean them up and it's amazing on how much nicer they turn out. Now this one doesn't have what I consider a bunch of detail. It does have the head on here and it does have the spindles that are nice. It does have this cut out and these bangles or whatever you want to call their their wood obviously. But it is it is a fine made clock but I don't think it is, it is as old as some of my other ones. But just the same this being rebuilt in 1958 I'm sure this clock's got some age to it. 
Okay, I, I'm outside again, obviously, and we're going to pull this out. I hate doing this. This has been cleaning for over 24 hours, or soaking, I should say. I'm going to give it a little quick clean here with the brush. Try to get this thing to be a little bit prettier and a little bit cleaner where the any one of these gears are. Okay, let's take this in the house, rinse it off, and put it in, uh, or rinse, rinse off hot water, then we'll put it in soapy water, and then we'll take it and use Dawn dishwashing soap to wash off any of the cleaning chemicals so it'll be clean as can be, and then we'll go ahead and oil this up. Now remember, just in case, Go ahead and close your drain. And I see I have nothing in the sink. So I'm going to drain this out. Now we're going to Add some soap. They don't take much. They're not filling the whole sink anyway. I think shine. Just move the bubbles out of the way. Okay, I don't see anything in the sink that's gonna that fell off of here by chance. So let's go ahead and drain it. And then we'll rinse this off with hot water again, and we'll take it in and uh, use a hair dryer on it so we can get it dry right away. No, I don't have the drain shut. By now, anything was going to fall off, it should have fallen off by now. There we go. So let's take it out there and put it to the hair dryer. Okay, I got this all clean from outside. I got it washed. I got it soaped and re-rinsed. Used a hair dryer on it. And now I'm ready to go ahead and start oiling it. And this oiler, like I've showed before, this here goes in and out. And it's kind of like a pump that will pump the oil out and then suck it back in. Because all you want is just a little drop on each one of those. Then you want to suck all that water back out. Or, excuse me, all the clock oil back out. So here, we're going to go ahead and put a drop oil on each one of these. Try to pay attention to 
keep them in line maybe if you can so you know which ones you already oiled okay I got this side done and go over here this is a little more difficult but you do want to get these gears here these here help with the winding possibly before you oil it I don't know if you can see that or not but these have got bushings in them and shake them back and forth because there's a chance you might need to put new bushings in here and I do have the tool for that but I'm not going to bring it out right now because we're not going to do it and there's no sense in showing it to you unless I can actually show you how the tool works. Rebushing the clock is actually easy but it's time consuming because you have to split this frame apart to get the gear out of the way so you can actually bore out the old bushing and put in the new bushing. I'm going to make sure to look at each one of these gears that they go all the way through or if I need to sneak in there somewhere and add a little bit of oil. I've already oiled this one. I put a little more in there. It does go down through. Everything's looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take my tissue and dab around. So if there's any extra oil laying around on there, I can get it out of there. So it's not a pill for me later. Or the customer. We don't want any oil that's in here is going to draw dust. Now this clock's a good clock. As in, it doesn't normally draw that much dust because it does have a door on it. So it's kind of like a sealed clock, which is a less maintenance clock. Because the dust isn't apt to go in there. Less apt to go in there. Okay, we got that all done. Let's go ahead and put this thing back in the box and get it all put back together again and get it all uh, running. Make sure things run just right. Get our bong, make sure that's hitting right so it's not nasty sounding, but it does, we do want it to work. So let me get the box. Okay, so here's our clock box. Let's get our works. And carefully set down in here. And we'll line up the holes. And of course, we have our dishes screws so we don't lose anything. So let's get them put back in. So I'll be right back after I get these four screws in to hold the works in. Okay, I leveled my clock this way. I don't care about back and forth. And can you hear that thing ticking the way it is? It's not a smooth tick. And to smooth that out, a second here. To smooth this ticking sound out, this rod here that goes up to the ticker, you need to bend that just a little bit, either this way or bend it this way to center it better, have it tick, and listen for it. It's supposed to be a smooth tick-tock, 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 not tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. So let me give that a little bend and let's see what it sounds like in a minute. How's that sound? What I did is 
is I grabbed a hold of it up here and I used my finger and I bent it this way just a little bit. Now it's a very smooth ticking clock. There's a chance you have to hold it and bring it back this way, but don't get carried away with this rod, especially don't let it bend up in here too much. You can hold it clear at the top, but don't be messing with this. Use this rod to do the bending. I'm level down here. Don't care about this way. And now I have it ticking like it's supposed to. Sounds like a real clock. So now what I'm going to do is get the face back on with the alarm that sets in here. And we'll talk about that alarm in a few minutes too after I get this face on to tell you how to set the alarm on this thing. Now don't forget to put your wire back on that goes to the alarm and get it set. You need to have this wheel on here. It just slides on. You have this gear and that arm has to drop down inside this area for the alarm to go off. So slide it on. Like I say, it just slides on. That's all it does. It snugs onto the shaft and goes around with the shaft to make the alarm go off. So actually you can put this on, turn it as you're shoving it in and it'll go right into place. And to adjust this wire, you have the wire coming out the alarm. You can bend that up and down to get the right adjustment to make this thing go off when it's supposed to. So let me get the face on and I'll show you just how the alarm works. Now the face of this clock, it's vintage. You can see where it's got scrapes and the paint's coming off and whatnot. But that's part of having a vintage clock. Now you can order new uh, paper templates or whatever that you can glue on here, including the center one, so you can have it look brand new if that's what you want. But you kind of take away from the age of the clock. But it depends on what, it's going to be your clock, so you decide what decor you want in your clock. So anyway, I'm just going to set this up here and go ahead and install the screws and then we'll put this piece back on. Okay, this works isn't exactly centered so I'm going to keep one screw out so I can get this part inside there and the alarm part where you, where you see it drop down I'm going to watch where that little rod is let me show you here this here little rod here, that's what goes down to this alarm and that's what needs to fall on top of here. So once we get this thing man manipulated around, we will have that thing just pop right on here. So let me take this one screw out. I guess I'm going to have to loosen that other screw too. And push that on there. this thing in as far as it's going. To make this tighter, you can see it's been cut on both sides. You just crimp it. And now it's going to be tight going on there. Okay, let's go ahead and put our screws back in here. Put that 
snug, not snug, but it's up there. Put this one into place. Don't get carried away on tightening these up. Because it doesn't take anything to really hold that face on there. Okay, I got that pretty close. And just to show you, or to make sure, I guess I'll say. That way I know it's on, that uh, little rod going across is on the shaft now. So I'm going to lay this thing down on its back so we can put the hands on a lot easier. Okay, to put the hands on, the hour hand if you wanted to bring this around to see what time it was, I guess we'll say you can put the, set the minute hand on, bring it around. So it's 12 o'clock. So that means I can go ahead and take this hour hand and let's put it right at 12 o'clock. And then this minute hand, it's got a square nut in it. So that goes on there. We don't want to forget the spring washer. That's going to hold that on there. And now, the more difficult part is this here. Now, this is the point, and this is the fatter end, and so we need to slide it in like a sliver into the hole of the shaft. And let's see, let me get my pliers here. Let me look for the... Let me see where my hole is, make sure. Okay, it's right in front of me. So this is the difficult part is, don't lose the pin. Push down. Get it started. They make new pins for these two in case you lose one. They're usually brass pins. Let me turn this clock a little bit so I can see what's going on on this other side. My fingers aren't working like they should. Neither is this pliers. It's got a little spring load that keeps going inside itself.
There we go. See that where it came through? Let's see if I can bring this a little closer. So there's a fat end, there's a skinny end, it's snugged in there, and we're ready to go. So let's put the pendulum back on and see how she works. Okay, we got the clock going. Looks fantastic. Now to explain our alarm. First off, you got to wind it up. I would suggest don't get carried away because it doesn't shut off right away. Unless you're going to be away and you need to hear it later. <coughs> anyway, what you look at to set this thing, you need to know Roman numerals also. But uh, it's 12 o'clock and let's say you want it two hours later to go off. You're supposed to, I'll let you figure it out, but there's a one and there's a two. And you point that two at the two hour because I only, in two hours, I want this thing to go off. And so when the hand comes around at two o'clock, this should cause this bell, this here alarm part, to go off and start ringing. But we're going to kind of cheat and pretend. We're going to move this instead. Okay, I want you to pay attention to this rod here. So I'm going to turn this dial up here and you'll see it fall. And I want you to watch that rod down there. I'm going to hold this and you'll see where it'll pull back up. So we're going to bring it around the alarm's going to go off, it falls down, which would cause this to, if I have it wound down. I'm going to watch that rod as I still bring it around. Try to stop the shadow. So see, there it goes up again, so that holds it. So... By the looks of it, you got one, two, three. You have to move it four hours to stop the alarm. So that means you don't have a full 12 hours. So that means in approximately eight, you have a maximum of eight hours that you can move this. So that's how you set it. You figure 12 o'clock, like I say, two o'clock or five o'clock, whatever. Once you learn what the Roman numerals are, which you can fake it pretty good. The one line always means one o'clock or one hour, two lines, two hours, and just figure three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and go around that way. So that's how you set one of those alarms, even though that is so annoying. But if you have a loud kitchen, which this is a kitchen clock that, uh, you'll be able to hear this thing go off. But normally nowadays, you don't leave these in the kitchen. You usually have them out in your living room, unless you have a big kitchen that uh, you want to show off this clock. And nowadays, we do have good exhaust fans on our stoves. Hopefully you have a good exhaust fan. And so that's going to keep the grease off of this clock too. So now that that's set, now that we have it oiled, we can let this thing run, in which I like to let it run at least 12 hours before I even mess with it. I'll set the time anyway, for what time it is right now, and then I'll check it out in 12 to 24 hours. That way it gives the uh, oil time to lubricate everything well. And then I can adjust it. And the way to adjust these clocks, down on the bottom here, you have this little, let me get this a little closer.
you have this thing here that you can screw and you screw it well I guess they call that clockwise to get this weight to go up. And the only reason why you're getting the weight to go up is because the clock's running slow and you need this to tick faster. If the clock is running fast you need to go counterclockwise to bring the bring this weight down and bring the pendulum down and that will slow your clock down. But like I say for now Nope, yep, there goes my heater. It's getting cold out here, I guess. But for now, like I say, we're going to just let this thing set. I'll set the time, and we'll have her all set up for the customer that owns this clock. So until next time, and you did notice, this clock doesn't bong once on the half hour. It only bongs for every hour that it is.